Welcome to the Info Wars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is January 14th, 2015. Let's get straight into our news tonight. Last year, ISIS gave us a map detailing their plans for essentially world domination. And they're far from that, but they do continue with their attacks. And now we have this ISIS sympathizer arrested for allegedly plotting U.S. Capitol attack. All right, some news out of Ohio. Fox News confirming the Department of Justice arresting an ISIS sympathizer in Ohio, charging the man with plotting a jihad attack on the U.S. Capitol in Washington. And the article reads, Christopher Lee Cornell, age 20, of Green Township, considered members of Congress to be his enemies. So we'll bring you more as this story develops. But this isn't the only place where we see threats. In Portland, we have a Portland teen. He's accused of threatening to blow up a deli in the name of Allah. A 19-year-old is accused of threatening workers repeatedly at a northeast Portland deli when he wasn't able to buy cigarettes and said he would blow up the store in the name of Allah. Court reports say Abdallah Mohammed is accused of making disparaging remarks about Jews in Israel in July, according to an arrest warrant affidavit. So let's be very clear. Yes, we do talk about these stories because we do take terror threats seriously, but it's not to say that these people represent all Muslims. Like I said, these may be guys who are out there threatening to blow up uh, grocery stores or attacking the Capitol, but that doesn't mean that all Muslims are like this. There are plenty of Muslims that went to work today, they went to school today, and pose no threat to society. Now let's move on to this. U.S. and France target Boko Haram and focus on Africa's strategic minerals after Boko Haram reportedly killed hundreds of people in a remote Nigerian town of Baga and detonated a bomb. The Telegraph estimated the terror group now controls approximately 20,000 miles of territory in an area the size of Belgium. The British newspaper characterizes the group as the African version of the Islamic State, a caliphate that has supposedly achieved mastery over 11 local government areas with a total population exceeding 1.7 million people. Omitted from the discussion and from the established me media reports on Boko Haram is the fact the terror group, not unlike the Islamic State in Syria and Iraq, and according to the BBC, now in Afghanistan, is supported and funded by Saudi Arabia and has also received assistance from Libyan mercenaries linked to Al-Qaeda, the same Al-Qaeda that we fund and train and we drop uh, air grenades to them and all that good stuff. So this is uh, the thing that's going on, not just in our country, but all around our world, because you understand, as the troops do, and we're going to talk about that in just one second, that we don't want to fund Al-Qaeda and we definitely don't want to fight them, because what happens is we fund them on Monday and then we fight them on Friday. And I'm not saying that we shouldn't go out there and fight the terrorists. I'm not saying that one bit. But why are we fighting the terrorists that we fund? So you can see this full article on InfoWars.com by Kurt Nemo. And talking about this is the things I just spoke of. Now everybody's upset. The military is being asked, what do you think about President Obama, really? And they said all too much that we definitely disapprove of the actions of our commander-in-chief. This is from the Military Times. It says, do you approve or disapprove of the way this president is handling his job as commander-in-chief? And the graph on Military Times shows you definitely that they do not support the actions of President Obama. And, you know, why is this? You know, everybody wants to talk about this. Why don't people support President Obama? They always try to make it some type of racial issue. And, you know, when we talk about Obama, there's things Bush did that I don't like. There's things Clinton did that I don't like. And talking about Bush, you know, you send guys over there to Iraq, you know, Afghanistan, you have a million plus dead Iraqis, many of them non-combatants, people caught in a crossfire. Then you talk about what the Democrats do. You have bombing campaigns in Syria. You have bombing campaigns in Pakistan. Many, many uh, innocent people are caught up in these attacks. The Pakistan interior minister said 80% of the people targeted or killed by the drone attacks were non-combatants. And you may say, well, they conflate their numbers. Well, I'm pretty sure the U.S. downplays their numbers. So maybe it's not 80, but it's not the 10% or whatever President Obama wants you to believe. But it's not just that. Let's talk about the troops out there doing torture. We see uh, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs, he came back from combat. He said, yeah, I delivered people over there to be tortured. And, you know, the Democrats made fun of the Republicans and talked bad about them, about these issues. But then the Democrats, they do the same thing. Dianne Feinstein was recently out there saying, you know, we should stop all this torture. Like, yeah, you should. You should also shut down Guantanamo Bay like you said you were going to a long time ago. And another reason why the military doesn't like President Obama, when it comes down to the money. You guys remember the sequester when they said we have to shut down this, we have to shut down that. We have to stop White House tours. They even threatened not to pay the military. But don't worry, they still had enough money, uh, the president and his family, to go on a very lavish vacation soon after that. So you can find that full report on the Military Times. And we'll move on to the next article. FBI says John Boehner's Westchester bartender planned to poison him. <laughs> Sorry, I actually laughed there. 
Michael Robert Hoyt, age 44, was indicted January 7th on charges of threatening to murder the congressman in a plot police said included poisoning his drink at a country club. And he went on to say, uh, Mr. Hoyt, that he thought Boehner was the devil. Well, I mean, I'm not going to go as far as call the man the devil. He's not one of my favorite characters out up there uh, in Washington Capitol here, wherever he may be. But yeah, I don't think you go out and poison the guy. You vote him out of office because I know a lot of the Republicans were celebrating. Yeah, you know, after the uh, midterm elections, yeah, we got more seats here. We got more seats there. They really haven't done too much different. And, you know, you have Republicans, Democrats, they may differ on things like a, abortion or uh, gun issues, things such as that. But when it comes down to the brass tacks, you know, you talk about wars, you talk about uh, torture, you talk about uh, economic crisis. These guys really don't do too much different. Obama's like, we all hated the bank bailouts. I'm like, well, why are you bailing them out? And that's just one issue with uh, the very unpopular John Boehner. And we'll end tonight with this before we go on to more special reports. Lawmakers reintroduced CISPA cybersecurity bill. The Cyber Intelligence Sharing and Protection Act, which encourages internet companies to share your private data with the government under the guise of cybersecurity, was reintroduced by Congress Rep. Dutch Ruppersberger of Maryland. A leaked draft of the bill, which isn't publicly available yet on Congress.gov, is practically a carbon copy of its 2013 incarnation and is exactly what President Obama wants in a proposal he made Tuesday. But why would companies want to do this? Because under CISPA, they'll have legal immunity, both civil and criminal, for sharing your data. So there's no incentive for them to strip any of your personal details they send to the government. So yeah, why not? We saw Twitter, was it last year, year before, they got in a big fight because they didn't want to release their tweets. And now you see companies, you know, under the guise of CISPA, which they're always going to repackage and send back out there. And this is the thing. We've been talking about CISPA, SOPA, all these bills for a while now, for several years now. They keep getting repackaged and resent out there until they eventually find something that fits. So every time we knock them down, if we knock them down again this time, don't be convinced that it's over. It's always a fight. The, what's it? The, uh, the quote, the price of freedom is eternal vigilance, and that's what you have to be. You have to be eternally vigilant. And that's why we're here on the InfoWars Nightly News. And coming up after this break, we'll be talking about the vigilance of Joe Biggs. He was watching the video of the young man executing two Russian spies. We'll talk about that. And also, Darren McBreen has a special report, the history of the CIA. Stay tuned. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is, it's hard, even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food in our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. 
Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. And welcome back. In this segment, we're going to talk about something very serious. We see all types of propaganda here in the States trying to get children to do this or that. But now we see propaganda abroad trying to bring children into the ranks of ISIS. And to discuss this, we have Joe Biggs, InfoWars.com. Well, they've stooped to a whole new level of lowness. You know, you've got these grown men who kind of understand what they're doing. They're radicalized. They're out of their mind. They're going around chopping people's heads off. And now they come out with this new propaganda video where they get this young child executioner to go up to these two Russian spies that they've captured and basically pull out a handgun and execute them right in the back of the head. So the best way to talk about this further, let's go ahead and check out the video and then we'll talk about that. И обращаемся к каждому, кто вздумал шпионить за муджахидами и мусульманами. Мы не почувствуем ни пощады, ни жалости к ним. Честь. So, Joe, what exactly did we see there? Well, one of the interesting things is before, just ignore the video you you just saw. What you have to focus on is the people who made the video, Mm -hmm. Al Hayat. They are the ISIS propaganda media group, so to say. They're the ones who put out the video that we saw a few months back, Flames of War, where it shows the uh, ISIS jihadists, you know, setting up these ambushes on soldiers, blowing up stuff. Big propaganda video to get a a lot of the younger um, young, impressionable minds to get amped up and want to join the jihad. And this is another tool that they're using. They're trying to promote now or uh, recruit, I should say, younger children to grow up, to be uh, radicalized at a younger age, and to help carry out these attacks because what they're saying is, is this is going to be a long, fought-out war. So, so that's they need more soldiers. They need more soldiers, and they want to get them young while they can. But one of the interesting things about this is how you see that child's hand very steady, it's not shaking at all. A young kid like that, having a gun, getting ready to go up and kill someone, I think at that age, however you know young he is, would be scared out of his mind to get ready to be on camera and execute two people. Wouldn't that kind of blow you away as oh, well? Oh, yeah, even as an adult. Yeah, I mean, even as an adult, yeah, for most people. But there's a, there's a few interesting aspects of the video. You see the shot. It's not a normal recoil on the gun as well that I noticed. Also... When you see the shots, you don't see any kind of exit, anything like that, because he's pretty close range, right about the back of the neck. So you don't see anything coming out of the people as well. You just kind of see them fall over in unison as they get shot. So that's one of the things I think about when I look at that as someone who's been there. Now, I'm not saying that children aren't capable of doing something like that. In my experiences in Iraq, I've actually seen in ambushes, children come out with grenades, with guns, AK-47s, and be a part of an ambush. Actually throw the grenade at the convoy or pick up an AK-47 like their older brothers around them and fire back at soldiers. So I'm not saying it's too far-fetched for something like that to happen, right. but the way this video looked and then knowing that it's coming from Al Hayat, the ISIS propaganda team, it makes me a little hard to believe that this is an actual recording of a live uh, execution. Yeah, and we talk about the children and we may not think these children are exactly who we think they are. But you have another story talking about you may find out somebody isn't who you think they are, maybe after several years of a relationship. Yeah, there was an interesting story on ESPN.com. NASCAR driver Kurt Busch, uh, he is in court right now with his ex-girlfriend over a domestic violence dispute. But new revelations have popped up, and he is claiming that his ex-girlfriend is in fact a trained government assassin. Let's take a look at that video. Now, have you ever dated someone and felt like you actually knew that person and then months, maybe years later, found out you really didn't know who that person was? Well, this story is almost like Mr. and Mrs. Smith, except Mr. Smith is a NASCAR driver and Mrs. Smith owns a contracting company and also heads up an Armed Forces Foundation as well out of Washington, D.C. Meet Mrs. Smith. 
Have you been a fan boy? Yeah. Have you violated international law? Huh? Oh, Roxy Lee. This is a story right now that's on ESPN.com. Kurt Busch says X was a trained killer. The NASCAR driver known as the outlaw testified Tuesday he believes his ex-girlfriend is a trained assassin dispatched on covert missions around the world. Now, Kurt Busch said that everyone on the outside can call me crazy, but I've been on the inside. I know what's going on. I've seen it firsthand. His attorney, Rusty Harden, questioned why he still believed Patricia Driscoll is a hired killer. And in an interview late Tuesday, Driscoll called Bush's assertion ludicrous, saying that he's taken it straight from a fictional movie script that she has been working on for eight years and that he has thus far proofread. Now, Bush pairing in court again over Driscoll's request for a no order contact continued to push for his legal team to discredit his ex as a scorned woman out to destroy his career, portraying her as a character fit for a screenplay. He recounted one time in El Paso, Texas, when he said Driscoll left in camouflage gear and then later on returned in a black trench coat with blood spattered gown underneath. A day earlier, Bush said his ex-girlfriend told him she was a mercenary who killed people for a living and had shown him pictures of bodies and the gunshot wounds. Bush said Tuesday that Driscoll had claimed that the female character in Zero Dark Thirty was loosely based off of her and a few other females within the government. Now here is a brief background on Patricia Driscoll. Patricia is an American businesswoman and author and native of El Paso, Texas. Driscoll now heads a national charity, the Armed Forces Foundation, and she is a CEO of a surveillance system company Frontline Defense Systems LLC, both out of Washington, D.C. Last month, Michael Donchev, who served as a personal assistant to Bush and Driscoll, said an ailing Driscoll told him in September that she had picked up or she had been picked up by a big man and slammed to the ground while helping round up immigrants at the Mexican border, a story Donchev considered far fetched. But Donchev said Driscoll also asserted that she was a trained assassin for the U.S. government and once told him, I take down foreign governments. I own Washington. Well, here it is. What do you think? Is this just a regular soccer mom? Is this just little old Patricia Driscoll who is a businesswoman? Or is she in fact a trained assassin? Or is Kurt Busch out of his mind? Has he driven that NASCAR one too many times and breathed in those fumes that have completely made him lose his mind in every way possible and he has completely come up with this you know fake story that she is this vatican assassin who goes out on late night missions comes back in blood spatter gowns and runs washington all right thank you joe biggs and when we come back after this break darren mcbreen will close out our show with a special report the history of the cia 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Yes. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms 
of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12, Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. In 1933, Marine Corps Major General Smedley Butler was approached by a wealthy and secretive group of industrialists and bankers, led by none other than Prescott Bush, to overthrow President Franklin Delano Roosevelt and establish a fascist dictatorship right here in the United States. During that time in history, Smedley Butler was the most decorated Marine of all time and the conspirators believed he could command a rogue army of 500,000 World War I veterans to stage a coup d'etat and overthrow the United States government. The plan to install a fascist dictatorship by force was exposed when Major General Smedley Butler blew the whistle and identified the ringleaders in a testimony given to the United States House Committee on Un-American Activities. The committee concluded that Butler's allegations were true but incredibly, no one was charged, and the majority of the media blackballed the story. Senator Prescott Bush, who is the father of George Bush Sr. and the grandfather of George W. Bush, went on to help finance Hitler's rise to power and even continued business dealings with the Nazis well after America entered the Second World War. It wasn't until his company's assets were seized in 1942 under the Trading with the Enemy Act that his financial ties with Nazi Germany were finally dissolved. At the end of World War II, Operation Paperclip was launched by the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, to smuggle known Nazi war criminals into the United States for recruitment into U.S. intelligence agencies. The Nazis were cleared to work in America after having their backgrounds bleached by the military. False employment histories were provided, and their previous Nazi affiliations were completely removed from the record. The OSS provided a model for the Central Intelligence Agency that was established in September 1947. The CIA specialized in propaganda, economic warfare, sabotage, and demolition. By the early 1950s, they controlled over 25 newspapers and wire agencies and had 3,000-plus employees engaged in propaganda. Journalists willing to promote the views of the CIA included members of the New York Times, Time Magazine, Newsweek, The Washington Post, and CBS Television. The CIA's rise to power gave birth to the military-industrial complex, and by the end of Eisenhower's presidency in 1961, it had become evident that the federal government could no longer control the agency. The CIA had gone rogue. I appeared before the Congressional Committee, the highest representation of the American people under subpoena to tell what I knew of activities, which I believe might lead to an attempt to set up a fascist dictatorship. Does America owe its edge in military technology to Nazi war criminals brought here after World War II? The truth is that thousands of former Nazis, some of whom committed atrocities, went to work for the United States government. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in executive session. At CBS, uh, we uh, had been contacted by the CIA. As a matter of fact, by the time I became the head of the whole news and public affairs operation in 1954, the ships had been established, and I was told about them and asked if I'd carry on with them. We're really talking about intelligence at the highest levels of the U.S. government, setting the broad direction uh, for the nation. Have you brought with you um, some of those devices which would have enabled the CIA to use this poison for, we have indeed, for killing people? But also the toxin itself would not appear in the autopsy? Yes. Well, when the president does it, that means that it is not illegal. 
If you've been anywhere near a television set or a radio these past few hours, you already know that John Lennon of the Beatles is dead. He was shot late this evening in front of his apartment building in New York City. Despite evidence that Noriega was involved in drug trafficking, Bush kept Noriega on the payroll. We interrupt your regular programming to tell you of a plane crash in northeastern Minnesota where we have just had confirmed a short while ago eight people were killed on a small beach aircraft that was on its way to Eveleth, Minnesota, including Senator Paul Wellstone of Minnesota, and according to the senior staff in the senator's office, not only the senator, but his wife, Sheila, his daughter, three members of his staff, and the two pilots. The CIA has been and is now completely out of control. The accusation is that drugs are being sold by the Contras and that the CIA knew about it and didn't do anything. Shots. Get him out! After the assailant, there are two or three people down on the on the ground. An assassination attempt. The president was hit, but pushed immediately into the limousine and rushed to the hospital. William Colby has been missing since April 27. His canoe was found washed up on the banks of the Wicomico River, April 28. He's missing and presumed drowned. After. The United States tonight declared in effect that Panama's General Manuel Noriega is a threat to this country's national security. When George Bush became director of the CIA in 1976, he inherited Noriega as a contact. When you read these outrageous charges by a drug-related, indicted dictator, discount them. They are total lies. In 1976, flight 455, which took off from Venezuela bound for Cuba, suddenly exploded. All 73 passengers and five crew members aboard died after the plane crashed near Barbados. of the terrorists were found to be Latin Americans contracted by the U.S. One of the attack's masterminds, Posada Capriles, currently lives freely in Miami. Either you are with us or you are with the terrorists. I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. The numbers about potential civilian casualties, I, I take with a, a somewhat big grain of salt. Let us bomb these places. What does that make Hillary Clinton to the Bush family? My, my sister-in-law. I love Bill Clinton. J.P. Morgan. tap water versus filtered city of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled city of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. I call it H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. 
The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide.